Alright, I'm playing the fifth uh, Magic 2013 draft. I am 2-0. I won both matches with 2-0, but so has Wolf1k, and he is the guy we are going up against in the final. And our problem is that this is our deck. So it's a black green mess without removal, without any main deck way of dealing with flyers. And it's mainly just fat on the ground. We won two out of four games with the single Sounds of Delirium, which is an awesome first pick card, in case you didn't know that, even in a deck such as this, where it has no synergies whatsoever. Uh, yeah, uh, haven't yet seen the Sign in Blood any time in the... Uh, Nephrox has been out. So let's see what we can do. Uh, there are... Um, a lot of hands I can get that are just wins with this deck, so I'm not. Um, I, I stand a good chance, but against the deck that's four zero, I I am uh, wary, and I think he is a favorite. But I will do my best, and here we go. I'm playing first. Uh, this is a great hand. Four lands, three uh, cards of different casting cost. And uh, he's taking Mulligan. So we're off to a great start here. I'm playing a forest. I'm hoping that I can crush him with just Timber Pack Wolf uh, Corsair. Which is a great start that some decks just can't handle uh, on a bad day. So it's white, and I hope it's not blue. I hope it's not black. Oh, yeah, it's exalted deck. Yeah, that's what it is. White, black, exalted is the only deck I've O3 in this format, and one of the decks I really can't play. But I know it's good, it's beating me all the time. Now my curve fill out so nicely. Uh, and I would happily take that trade. I might even trade with uh, uh, the Corsair here. I'm not sure. I'm doing five to him, he's doing three to me. Uh, if he casts another exalted guy, I might have to block. But he didn't, and he missed his land drop. So, and killing the Timberfuck Wolf here is great, of course. He might very well have Show of Valor, but if he does, more power to him. Uh, that's a great trade for me. And of course he doesn't have Show of Valor now. Uh, we are going for the Shade and the Pack Leader next turn. So the Shade will just be a stupid 1-1. One, one. Which is one of the reasons why it's not a great card. And we are getting flooded now, so if he gets a land drop now, I I'm giving him a good chance to catch up with us. But if he misses the land drop now, he's in deep trouble. Because now he can cast Guardian of Croatia or something like that. And just stabilize. Yeah, Guardians of a cross up. So now I need to feign an attack. <sighs> oh, it's the shade. Yeah, I missed an attack. And a score of one point hit. And now I can get pack leader. Primadox Corsair combo going. And that should be quite good. So let's see if that can be done. Mr. Sunstriker. He changes very little on the board. Uh, so I'm just attacking with everything. And I can pump the shade too, if I need to. I will kill the, the Guardian, if I can. So do I pump now? No, I'm casting Primadox 
Timber Pack Wolf. Um, that's what I'm doing. Here's Primadox, and he's gonna bounce the Corsair. Because uh, that will give me a card. Bouncing the Shade is one mana more expensive, and that will give me a land. A card seems better than a land. So I am gonna bounce the Corsair. And now we should be able to set up a profitable block. Yes, there we go. I'm given this is a 6 4 exalted if he attacks. I think I might have to block this guy with the Primadox. That is setting me up for a kill very soon. I'm 2 for 1 ing him. Uh, he goes to 14. I do want my combo. Oh, I'm gonna take it. Because I'm gonna set myself up to kill that guy next turn. Because I can do so much damage to him. So I'm returning the Corsair. It is the correct decision, right? Yes. It is. Uh, I am playing the Corsair. And now I'm setting up, I'm gonna kill him with uh, uh, Corsair Timber Pack Wolf. Oh, there's another Timber Pack Wolf. And that means I can get another card. And though I should attack here first. Or lots and lots of damage. Uh, I confused myself thinking that the Timberwolf Wolf uh, wasn't played this turn. Um, I need. I can pump one. And I'm gonna disentomb the Timber Pack Wolf. Cast it for another card. Alright, yeah, I think I'm lethal next turn. Quite easily. Even if he has 10 life. But I will kill him. He's now 7-5. And I will kill him with the Timber Pack Wolves. Yeah, looking good. And of course this is just him having no mana. Uh, the Corsair is jumping. And he's coming back. <laughs> uh, yeah. Attack, pump like crazy. Play the elf, right? And he lets me kill the guardian, which I will, because then I'm lethal next turn. And I need to look out for actually being able to kill him. And maybe bounce the Arbor Elf instead. I misplayed already once in this game. Okay, so we are 1 0. That doesn't tell us anything because he has missed his land drops like crazy. Uh, he's white, black, exalted. I think this is the matchup where Sounds of Delirium isn't playing to our favor. We need plummets. Mind drop will be great. Decent tube won't be that great. Mark of the Vampire is, could be quite bad. 
Det kostar alltså lots and lots of removal. Um, mind rot, also not very convincing. Uh, I think it's Sans actually. And the reason I'm taking out Sans here is that he is... I need to stop his quick start, that's the way he wins. If the game goes long, I think I can beat through his defenses like I did this time. Uh, I'm not sure about this at all. But I'm gonna go with this, or am I? Yeah, I am. I need to stop a quick win, a quick exalted win from him. So I took in two Plummeth and out Sands and Disentomb. Uh, this is a bad starting hand uh, and definitely not one which we can keep, can we? Absolutely nothing happens. This is much better. Uh, killing a Sun Striker, of course the Sun Striker will be exalted, so that won't work. At least we got the <laughs> we got lots of mana now. And I think we are set up to lose quite well here. Yeah, Knight of Glory. Uh, and if he plays just one Guardian, I can't block him profitably. Uh, though getting the Disciple there is just fantastic. Setting me up for a shade, huge shade disciple. There's the guardians, and I think maybe next turn I need to. Uh, I'm not sure. Do I block next turn or not? I'm taking five next turn. <sighs> I'm not blocking. I might have to throw away the shades. Oh, I'm gonna throw away the wolf next turn. So I have a shade to disciple when I need to. Of course he didn't block there because I was bluffing uh, Titanic Growth. And I'm just taking this. It's uh, five points. Because he will cast an exalted guy. And next turn I'm sacrificing Mr. Wolf. I need to play only swamps now. So I really need to remember that. Oh, I'm only taking four. It's fucking Christmas. And uh, Warfuck. Uh, yeah, the plan is still to sacrifice the shade. Or is it? Am I gonna take for one more time? And sacrifice the wolf. I mean, if next time I can sacrifice the visionary. No, it's this is too much. Uh, but he's now attacking with the bird, which I can't do anything about. So I'm in deep, deep, deep trouble here. I did sideboard two plummets, didn't I? And this is why. Because plummet now would be so great. So I, I need to cast visionary, look for plummet. Am I, I am not dead next turn. So I'm still gonna be able to disciple for three next turn. Here's the visionary. I'm playing extra swamps now has no great point. <sighs> yeah, it's Disciple for three next turn. But that's not enough. No, it's not enough. I have to Disciple for two because I need to find something to deal with. Oh, that guy. Uh, dark favor, of course. Uh, yeah, as soon as you start a backpedal, 
you die against the exalted edge. And I'm happy I sideboarded out Sense of Delirium in this matchup. Cause I'm just dead. And he has plenty of flyers. You see, as soon as I stumble, I die. And once again, Plummet would be so very nice. Uh, uh, dark favor. I have two plummets in the deck. Do I need naturalize? I don't think I do. Do I need the rest? I don't think I do. It's just a matter of creatures. Skeptical on mind rot. Uh, what about mind rot? Hmm. Do I want to duress instead? I don't think I do. Let's do it like this. And let's draw a decent hand. This is a decent hand. It's not a very good hand, but... Oh, it's actually really bad, but I, I wouldn't dare sending that back. I probably should have sent that back. It's a virtual 5 land hand with 6 cards. If I never get to cast the, the elephant. That helps, and but I don't need to cast it yet. So I'm going wolf. And now we can tell that he has no splash. We didn't suspect no one either. No play leaves me as the aggressor. Uh, which is great, though it will end next turn when he plays the Guardians of Acrecia, which is their correct name. So we are playing another Swamp. And that guy looks like a good idea. Uh, okay, sorry, there was something. I can still do one point of damage and get closer to my overlord and just pray that he doesn't have murder or public execution. I th think I'm just playing swamps here, as long as I don't get a plane for the, uh, the shades. Okay, here is my execution. It's Blade Task Boar. It's gonna hit me for four every turn. And that is going to hurt so bad. Though this guy is uh, pretty good with the Visionary, except that he won't get used for that. But he will beat down like a crazy person. And next turn, Nefarox might win us the game. Wow, this will be tight. He has a 5 turn clock. Nephorox is... Pre oh my god. Oh, he has a 3 turn clock. Pray upon... I'm returning Elvish Visionary. Uh, I'm attacking with these guys. But I am dead in two turns. So, playing Nephorox doesn't save me. But next turn I can look for an answer with Visionary. What is my answer? My answer is Prey Upon. So I need to cast Nephorox now because... <sighs> oh my god. I think I'm dead. Let's see what happens. So what do I have that can be? I have prey upon. Um, 
And that's pretty much it, isn't it? More Call of Vampire. Disciple. Uh, Crippling Blight on the Primadox. Oh, well. An essence drain on Prime Docs. And that didn't do much, did it? We need to find an answer, and we need to find an answer before attacking. <sighs> Titanic growth. <laughs> it does 10 points of damage. Um, he's sacrificing that guy. I'm doing 10 points of damage. That doesn't help. If I attack with both, he's blocking that thing. That thing dies. I die. So the play here is visionary for a solution. Put a bomb! Um, that sign in blood is lethal. So let's attack. Yeah, he is exalted. He needs to attack a sacrifice a creature. He is also titanic. And uh, sir, you need two extra cards. <laughs> Sign him blood for the win. Huh? All right, some promotion for my channel. Um, and I won with Signing Blood. And if you saw last video, you know what happens when you win. Uh, first we need to... Uh, okay, this video is basically over, so now I'm just doing my administration. But if you haven't seen it before, and if you are thinking about how to keep track of your magic results, maybe this is a way. So this is what I do. First I have an Excel sheet with all my, all my games my drafts and here you can see I played 133 drafts since uh, coming back to magic in uh, coming back to draft in June of 2012 I'm losing 71 cents per tournament I was close to going infinite on drafting alone but uh, I didn't my first pick here was Yeva never cast her uh, I won more convincingly than yesterday which is so surprising uh, Sans of Delirium was great Yamato Cop was green white and one Sans and in the final I went into Wolfig who was and that was a hard game <laughs> So there I'm keeping track of that. I want three boosters. My rating should have gone up a bit. I used to have just 1753, 14 points for that. Uh, I was at, um, before the last mocks, 
Yeah, where was I at? 18, here. And you see the 1600 rating there from other accounts. So I was at 1824, my highest. And my deck was green, blue, white, splashing for priced elephant. Only white card. I had Nephorox. I had Disciple of Bolas, which I consider a better card than Nephorox. Yeah, even that high. I love my Disciple of Bolas. I had the token pack leader that I always need to win. Uh, had uh, no removal except that. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, what won me this game. Uh, the cost was 12. Uh, one tree lost zero. That puts me at 67.78. Match win percentage. So let's check for random value in the deck. What was in the deck? Nephorox, Disciple of Bola, Sands, uh, Yeva, they're all pretty much worthless. And these things are not worth anything either. Uh, Disciple of Bola, no, he's not worth anything. Using MTGO traders here, checking for this. I love this Apple Bolas. I think he should make a, a tournament deck. But half the time has gone now. I am. Um, I already have four of him. Oh, the Apple was a stupid search. There is. Yes. Um, so we really doesn't have much value. I think I maybe 10 cents. Uh, the pack value, I bought these packs at 3.33. What about Sans? It has no value either. So winning three packs is a ticket, and then the Disciple of Bola time 1.1. This means that I won um, nine tickets here, plus one point, so I won 10.1 tickets, and I lost 12. So even though I won, just like yesterday, I didn't get anything. I, I lost 1.9 tickets playing this draft. So drafting is, if you want to go infinite, uh, I, and I am infinite, but it's due to trading. If you want to go infinite, uh, the first thing you should do is to never draft. But drafting is so much fun, so you still do it. And I'm, I like to support my drafting by trading heavily. So that's what I do. Uh, and that's why there sometimes are uh, ads, uh, trades coming up in the middle of matches, because I have to support the habit. Well, um, yeah, the cycle of Bolas counting him at 0 0.1 and that's it so we are now actually down $97 on drafting that's a lot of trading to get up to $97 so that sucks uh, I will I don't know what to do after I reach $100 minus that will hurt and will make me probably do more pauper videos but right now I'm winning the M13 drafts, I'm doing videos, uh, some people are watching them, so um, doing the videos give me extra value. I have given up M13 drafts, but now with you guys I'm still doing them. And there's also this uh, M13 limited review document that I'm working on. I have uh, one version published, I haven't really finished it, it's just my notes, here are the print runs. This document contains... Uh, some core of the matter is generic questions about draft. Uh, Sam Black wrote an article on uh, Magic 30, uh, 2013. Uh, uh, reviews of every card here. Uh, some statistics of the, the first weeks of Magic 2013. Uh, uh, an article about archetypes that I have written myself. And some of my winning decks and print runs. You'll find this, this document in the show notes. And let's, let's write this down. So today is um, 2nd of February. This is how you note the 2nd of February in Sweden. And I am sorry, splashing white for priced elephant, which turned out to be a good idea. Eight forests, eight swamps, and one plains. One priced elephant. So what else was in the deck? Uh, We had some black creatures, they included Nephorox, Overlord of Grixis, 
to Liliana's shade, and I don't like the shades that much. They proved very good this time. I don't like Marco Duante. It also proved quite good this time. I love Disciple of Bolas. He's just so good. He's almost my second favorite rare after Tragtusk to get in the draft. And this time I got him second pick. Sadly, he has no value. Whereas Tragtusk, I sold, I drafted seven Tragtusks and I sold one of them for 16. They are now down to eight and I might even keep one if I get one. No, I probably will not. I'm too mercenary. I want to go infinite on drafting, so I will probably sell it. I'm not playing standard. Uh, and that is actually the first thing you should do if you want to go infinite on Magic Online. Do not ever play standard, because standard is really expensive. Unless you are really good, in which case you can finance your standard by playing standard dailies. But you would do so much better playing modern or pauper as your deck don't lose 80% of its value randomly. Uh, one Primal Ox, one Cantar Corsair. I come around on Primal Ox, I think it's really awesome and it's easy to disregard the fact that he is a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four. and you often have one guy to bounce. So he's a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four with a small uh, drawback basically but that's pretty good and sometimes you can just go insane with him like visionary or the pack leader combo that i actually got going in this this draft and one arbor elf and one sands of delirium one two matches just two sands that was my deck so what happened? We played match one against 10cc, who played blue, bl uh, white. He mulligan the first, and I sanded him to death in the second. And you remember yesterday I went 2 1, 2 1, 2 1. This was much more convincing. Though I still really can't say what made my deck winner. Sounds of Delirium, 1-0, grinding him out with better guys and Disciple in the second match. Match 3, I shouldn't give their name in this document actually. Uh, uh, uh. And that was We Be Exalted splashing R in the third game. For did he splash only for the unblockable guy? I'm not sure. That was pretty good against me because I had no removal, but he couldn't know that. Uh, he missed a lot of land rocks. He crushed me with dark favor plus exalted. Uh, I Nephoroxed and signed in blood him right before I died. I didn't even count sign in blood as an out there, but it, of course it was an out that I didn't think about. So Elvish Visionary was pretty good there. And I'll also include this deck list in the uh, In the show notes. Thank you for watching Magic Gathering Strat playing M13 drafting. Uh, and I love this draft format. I think it's so much more fun than uh, Return to Ravnica. Uh, there will be a Gate Crash pre release. I will post a video of the Gate Crash pre release, though I haven't decided on my guild yet. I see Boris winning a lot. Uh, I might go Boris, but I, my heart is in ghoul. And on the guild test I got uh, Orsov, so I might play Orsov. Thank you for watching.